Welcome everyone. So it's the third week of August and that means that we just got to share our business results for the second quarter. And there's no better time than to have our US CFO on, Chris Nicholas. And Chris, it's great to have you on the huddle, but what a quarter. We've got momentum, right? John, thanks for having me on, by the way. Boy, do we have momentum. You know, it's funny when you really focus on the customer, just great stuff happens. Um, the numbers you just saw, 5% comp, 14% two-year comp is amazing. Our grocery share is as strong as it's ever been. Our price gaps are as strong as they've ever been. Our membership of W Plus is growing. We're investing in marketing to bring new customers in. And our online business is growing. And, you know, within all of that, we're investing in our associates as well. So, you know, it's not a big surprise, John, that that we've got momentum because we're kind of doing all the right things. Yeah, I'm really excited about the quarter, the progress, the momentum. And I, I want to say thank you to the associates in the field and the home offices and the supply chain. You know, thinking about what happened the last quarter, there were just some real heroic efforts on behalf of the business in the food supply chain and the fulfillment centers. We doubled our e-commerce growth, more than doubled over the last two years. Our advertising business almost right at double, 95% up from a year ago. But so many people, including the merchants, replenishment, associates in technology and product, are launching new capabilities and helping us become an omni business. We've, we've said for a while now that we wanna serve customers any way they wanna be served, whether they wanna shop and have things delivered to their home, whether they wanna pick up or they wanna shop in the store, we'll be there for them. And there was a big shift back into the store this quarter. And I feel really great about the momentum we have now because back to school is off to a really strong start. We have momentum in apparel, backpacks and lunch boxes and all the things you'd expect going to school. And then we've got some, some big plans for the rest of the fall. But do take, uh, take time and let's make sure that we're working safely. We prioritize associate and customer safety throughout the pandemic. We'll continue to do that. And we'll always put that at the top of our list in terms of priorities. But being able to operate in this environment the way you've been able to is really impressive. And I just wanna say congratulations for a strong second quarter. So Chris, this is your first year working in Walmart US. I know you've been with, with uh, Walmart a while and International before you came over to the US team, but you've been in retail your whole life in a few different countries. So I'd love to hear you know, your story about um, what all you've done in the last few years. Yeah, John, you know, I, uh, I started out uh, in England uh, funnily enough, and my first retail job, proper retail job in a shop was at the age of 14. And that was uh, that was me pricing goods with a pricing gun, facing up products, work in the back room, all of those good quality retail jobs that you love. And, you know, I kind of fell in love with retail just really early. Um, I, I think even back then, uh, right when I was young, we could always make a difference in retail. You know, I grew up in a in an environment where no one had much money. And when retail's at its best, we bring innovation, we bring happiness to people's lives, and we do it at a great price so that people are able to afford what they need to have a good and happy life, frankly. And I've kind of followed that through my whole career. I've been in retail in nine different countries. Um, I've run businesses. I've been the CFO for different businesses. and. You know, whether that's in Europe, whether that's in the US here, whether that's over in Australia, there's something just really common about retail, which is that the customers will tell you what they want. And if you make them happy, you innovate for them, you give them the great stuff they want, then guess what? They'll come shop with you. And if you let them down next week, they'll choose somewhere else. I agree with that. It, uh, sometimes we say that loyalty in retail is the absence of something better, but you know, like you, I grew up in, in small towns across Southern Arkansas. And, and at that time, same thing. There wasn't a lot of money and value meant a lot then. Value means a lot now. And in this recent quarter, you know, we were, were fortunate to be able to talk about things like market share and food growing, but unit share growing faster than the dollar share, which means our relative value is improving. That's so important for customers so that a customer, when they shop with us, they can save money and they can live better. And that's really important to us and has been for a long time. Now, Chris, you mentioned just in there, you said quickly, you've lived in nine, nine countries, which is really impressive. I think I've only lived in four, which I thought was a lot. But now hearing nine, um, just a, a really impressive number. Um, you know, what, have, what did you learn in those countries? What about the differences? And then I just wanna you know, wrap this question by, what's unique and special about the US now that you've been here a few years? 
Yeah, well, four is not bad, John. That's three more than most people. Um, I just happen to have just been on a bit of a journey. And, you know, what's really fascinating about going abroad is that if you're curious, going abroad and looking to learn from all of the different places you you work and you live, because you always live in these places and become part of the community, really feeds your curiosity about what's possible. You know, it's really good and uh, positive to look at what's happening at your home. But also looking abroad, looking elsewhere, it helps you see what's the art of the possible. It helps you bring new things to the customer, frankly. And, and that's kind of the thing that I loved. I loved learning. I loved building my curiosity. I loved seeing what other people did. If I think about China, John, China's got three businesses that are the scale of Amazon. You know, that's really innovative. If I think about Europe, the discount end of the market, they understood that you needed to drop prices really hard and customers would come. If I think about Australia, the fresh products and the produce and how that's the hero is something I learned there too. And then around the world, looking at how you build the flywheel with financial services, with health and wellness, with loyalty, with payments, all of these things that customers tell us they want to make their lives easier. And just going abroad and seeing a different world helps you connect those things up. And I think that that's the essence of what matters when you, when you look away. And you don't need to go abroad to do that. You can be curious and you can sit here. We have the thing called the internet now. But a couple of other things I'd mention. The first is that there's more that's common with people globally than there is different. People want to be part of a community. They want a business that's going to serve them great food at great prices, like you talked about earlier, John. And, you know, the associates, they love to have purpose. They love to be driven to work in a company that's got values that are aligned with their own and that care about the customer and want to grow. So there's a lot that's common, but the thing that, that I think I learned a lot of is just all the differential world that's out there and all the things you can learn. I also have found that we have more in common than we have different, but something you said in there I, I think is interesting and, and I, I think of it the same way. I've always looked to the West for productivity and then looked to the East for innovation. But between all that, the, the most important word, if there's one takeaway, is curiosity and letting your curiosity lead some of your decision making. Now, Chris, as curious as you are and as many places you lived, talk about the U.S. for a second. What's unique about and what stands out about the U.S. now that you've been in a few years? Yeah, you know, here's the thing, John. Um, growing up in the U.K., you all maybe not know this, but the U.S. is the place that everyone wanted to live. Popular culture, the economy, the, just the, everything that's exciting that was happening in the world, the space race, it was all in the US. And so you, you may not know this, but that's kind of the place everyone wants to live when they're growing up here, right here. And, uh, and retail uh, also was that. So in Walmart, what I thought, what I think is really exciting is that when you work in retailers all around the world like I have, there's one retailer that everybody else looks to for a lead. Look for a lead about how you are going to treat your customers. Look for a lead about how you're going to innovate. Look for a lead on whether we're going to invest, how we're going to invest, how we treat our associates. And that that's true everywhere I've lived. And to be part of that is really exciting. There's a couple of things about the US in particular that I think make a difference. The first is the place. The place is an astonishing place, John. Just on a personal level, the the geography, you've got 50 different countries in one, in one country. The national parks I love, uh, the cities are astonishing and they are vibrant. The people are relentlessly positive. And I think there's something really special about that. People love to consume, but a lot of that is driven by just a belief in a more positive future than we see today. And I think good stuff comes from being positive and and believing that there's a bigger, brighter future out there, that really aligns with how I feel about life. And, and I think the other thing to say, and we mustn't take this for granted, the US is easily the strongest economy in the world. We have the reserve currency, we have the policymakers to help this happen, and we've got businesses like Walmart who will invest in growth and invest in the country. And I think us investing in the US, the government investing in the US, the having the reserve currency means that this growth we're seeing right now will continue. This will continue to be the strongest economy in the world for decades to come. 
And it's just the brilliant place to be if you want to innovate and grow a business, which is what we're doing right now, John. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And it's uh, American ingenuity that has has fueled this economy for so long and continues to. And we're, we're excited. I'm excited about the things that we're doing to innovate in the business. And you know, on behalf of, of the entire associate team, thank you again for everything you're doing there now. I do have to ask Chris, and and I know the answer to this, and I'm, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna say there, this might be unexpected, but what do you do to relax? And I, I'll use the word relax, and most people are not gonna view your answer as all that relaxing, but go ahead and talk about it. Different people have different ways to relax, John. It's true. Some people watch Netflix or you know spend time you know sleeping. What I like to do is run really long distances. Um, so you know this year I've I've got a few pretty long runs, hundred k, sixty two miles is. I've got two or three of those and I've got a big one next year. And, and you know, that might sound like an odd thing to say that that's the way to relax. But, you know, John, I think finding your way to, to clear the mind, finding your way to stay healthy, finding your way to, to feel happy, well, that's what I find on the trails. And you know what? I'm going to be, I'm going to have to say this, but there is nowhere better in the world than the USA and there's almost nowhere better than the USA, than Northwest Arkansas, to feed that obsession with running. I was uh, reflecting one Friday, I asked you what your plans for the weekend were going to be. And I think you said something like, I'm running 60 miles overnight tonight on the trails in the dark. And I just was wondering if I should ask you, you know, you don't have to do that. <laughs> of course, uh, it's, it's part of the goal. And I know you have some bigger goals. And, you know, the point, though, is everyone should find their thing. And their thing could be reading. It could be music. It could be art, it could be walking, running, cycling. There are just so many ways that, that people can, as you said, clear your mind and get some, get some sunlight, but just find ways that you can, uh, you can reinvigorate yourself and you can be ready um, in, in roles like these that we have and, and so many people across the country. The pressure's always on, so you have to find ways that you can you know, be fresh, be rested, be ready for whatever challenge is in front of you. So, you know, last thing, uh, back to earnings. Um, Customer behaviors have changed quite a bit. Um, we've seen a huge increase down in the last two years in online shopping. Of course, this recent quarter, we saw people back in the stores. Um, I think it just reinforces that our business has to be positioned really well when it comes to being an Omni retailer. How do you feel about that? Yeah, John, um, actually, it's really exciting to be where we are right now. We're a growth business. We talked about this in February to, to all of you and to investors that, now is the time that we put our foot down on the accelerator and grow. We're a 59-year-old business. We've got $400 billion of turnover or near enough, and yet we're a growth business. And the way we do that is, guess what? Focusing on the customer. The customer is telling us what they want, how they want to shop, where they want to shop, how we, they want us to make their lives simpler so they can live a better life. And you know, that isn't just about price, although price is absolutely at the cornerstone of it. It's also about convenience. And the customers will tell us, I would like to buy other non-food products. Um, I would like them to be delivered to me, or I'd like to pick them up. I'd like you to pick my groceries for me, or I'll come and do it myself. And there's a whole load of other things that come on the side of that. Building a third-party marketplace, building a health and wellness business, building a financial services business. They're all parts of that growth that's centered in one thing that's really important, which is it's what the customer wants us to do. And if we lead with what the customer wants us to do, if we innovate to make it surprisingly good for them, to make it easier for them, and continue to enable us to have low prices that keeps them coming to us too, then we're just going to continue to win. And that's kind of really important. And the one thing I'd say is just remember that if you can have top line growing Everything else works really well in a retail business. That allows us to pay for all of the innovation that we want to do, all of the investments in our supply chain and in our stores to make customers' lives better, to make our associates' lives better. So, John, yeah, it's really exciting that we've got an omni future. That tells us that we're doing the right thing for the customer. And if we can innovate at the right pace and at the right speed, and invest at the right pace and the right speed will grow because people will be thanking us with their business. So there's so much of what we're doing that depends on the way we work together, the way we think about what's gonna happen in the future in our customers' lives and being ready to serve our customers. And as you heard Chris say, in a number of ways, we wanna be customer-centered, 
We've got to be obsessed with delivering the best possible experience, removing friction, and we've got to we've got to fight to do the right things for customers because they have other choices, and we should be thankful that they've chosen us. Again, I just want to close by saying, you know, Chris, thank you for your impact. Um, it's great to learn more about you. I think now everyone who who knows who hears this will, or sees this will recognize what a curious person you are. You're always looking for innovation and looking for a way to improve the business. And that's really important as we move forward. So I'll just close by saying uh, thanks to you and the entire team, but thanks again to all of our associates who did such an amazing job in the last quarter and continue to do an amazing job in our back to school season, which has started off very strong. You're making a real difference in your communities. You're making a difference in your stores and fulfillment centers, and you're making a difference for the country. Thanks again. 